Hello, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Trevor Burns. I'm the Student Data Coordinator. I'm joined here with Brian Cunningham. Uh, help Desk Manager. Uh, with Charlotte Ellis. Data Manager. And Kathy Warren. Yes, good morning. Education Data Systems Manager. So today we're going to be going over quarterly reporting. So um, that's going to encompass a few reports. Um, but as shown right here, quarterly reporting, um, there's four schedules, obviously. The first one opens today, um, and this will be due on the 15th. Um, for quarter one, we're just including information from July till September. Um, quarter two will be in January, and that will include information from October going up till December, and that will be due the 15th of January, and quarter three is in April, and quarter four will be in June. But for quarterly reports, the reports I will be touching on today is attendance, truancy, behavior, and bullying. Um, while these reports are due quarterly, um, the title of the report will remain the same uh, in NEO. Uh, for example, it will just say truancy report, um, but there will be four schedules throughout the year, um, and each schedule will need to be verified on or before the due date, and all quarters will need to be certified by the superintendent. As far as getting to student reports, um, you'll log into NEO, and once you're in NEO, you'll see a tab up at the top like this, and you'll find student reports. You'll click student reports, um, and it will pull up a listing of reports. Here we have a little drop down that you can use to narrow your search, but all the reports will be broken down in a list once you're there. So for the first report we'll be going into is the student attendance certification um, in that list of reports. You will come down and you'll find these reports. Um, you will look for attendance certification report quarterly and attendance details report quarterly. Um, the certification report is where you'll be completing the report. Details just gives you um, a breakdown of your students. So we'll click the link for that top one, the certification report, and that will view the report. Um, as far as attendance goes, uh, Maine is required by law to report chronic absenteeism. Uh, a student is considered absent if they are present for less than 50% of their instructional day. So basically, if the student is, misses half, more than half of their day, that is zero, they weren't present that day. But if they make more than half of the day, that is one, they were present. Um, a student is considered chronically absent if they're enrolled for at least 10 days, are not in the grades uh, pre-K, and are absent 10% or more of those days. Um, and that's regardless if those absences are excused or they're not. Can you go back to the previous slide, Trevor? Yep. Just want to let you know that if you go into NEO student data student reports right now, you will not see those two reports that are circled. This is a screenshot from our test environment. We have our QAs working very diligently to get this pushed to production. We're hoping for uh, tomorrow. So as it stands today, you will not be able to go to these reports. But again, hopefully starting tomorrow, you will be able to go in to, again, uh, NEO student data student reports and see these two reports. So when these reports get up, we will have a post on the splash page on our help desk page. And we'll also send an email out to the listserv so that people will know that these reports are now available. We apologize that they're not ready now. Um, a lot of changes came about this summer, so it's been delayed um, in getting this out there. Thank you for pointing that out, guys. Um, moving on, um, yeah, once you're inside the report, um, this is what the report is going to look like for quarter one. Um, looks very similar to the report last year. Um, you have your days of, you have your aggregated days enrolled of all your students and the aggregated days present. Um, this is only looking at quarter one. So if this was quarter two, you would actually only see quarter two information in here, not a cumulative of quarter one and two. Um, some columns to look at, uh, number excluded. Uh, these are the number of students you have who are excluded for chronic absenteeism. Uh, these are students in PK or students who have less than 10 days enrolled with you. Um, you have your total number of students, uh, the number of students who were identified as chronically absent, and the percent of your student body who was identified as chronically absent. Um, this count and complete records column is very important. If you have any counts in this column, you will not be able to complete the report. Um, it will blank out the Certify and Submit button, as you can see here. But as far as locating those incomplete records, there's a student details link right here um, that you can click. 
Uh, I will show you later what that detail looks like, but for right now, we're just going to go into what another quarter would look like. So this is a mock-up uh, of quarter four. Quarter four will look similar to quarter one, just like here. The only difference is you'll now have this year-to-date summary. Um, quarter four hasn't been created yet, so this is why we just have a quick mock-up. But as you can see, the year-to-date summary uh, has all the information through our quarters that we've certified or updated throughout the year, and that will reflect here. And up in the top, we have just quarter four's information. So as you can see, quarter four is up here as well as down here. Um, one important thing to know for quarter four is this certification button in the other quarters is located above the year-to-date summary. Um, being uh, above the year-to-date summary is because you're only certifying the, the quarter information that you're in. So if we're in quarter two, you're only certifying quarter two's information. Same thing with three and one. However, when you get to quarter four, this button moves to the bottom because not only are we certifying what's in quarter four, we're also certifying that our entire year of information is correct. Uh, so, moving on, um, if you have any incomplete records in quarter four, um, so if like a new incomplete came up uh, during quarter four back in quarter two or three because we amended some data, those will stop you from certifying uh, quarter four. Uh, you will need to locate those students. If you have a one here, you'll just click student details next to that one, and it will uh, hold up. I believe we have a question too. So real quick, what that student details link look like, when you click that link, it'll pull up a detailed report of all your students that looks like this. Um, there is now a column right here marked incomplete data, and those are just students who have no attendance information entered in for them yet. Uh, if it was zero, that'd be perfectly fine. It just is blank. We can't accept blanks. So if you, you'll just click that field twice to uh, filter the yeses up to the top, and that will show you all the students who still need to have attendance entered in for them. Um, you had a couple questions uh, coming in. Uh, the first question is just wanting to double check if a student misses exactly half their instructional day, they count as present for the whole day. So if this, if they miss exactly half, they were expected to be there, say, for four hours today, they were there for two hours, they would be present. Um, not a question, just a suggestion. It would be helpful if the webinar slides were available to print prior to the presentation. So um, these webinar slides um, are actually available. They are kind of a mock-up of our summer slideshow. So all these slides you're seeing here are available in the summer slideshow from the summer, um, which is available on the Help Desk's webpage located in the tile, webinars and presentations. At the end of this presentation, I will show you where that is and you can we can walk you through getting there. And these slides will be available after. Right. Yep. I think the suggestion is that they'd like to be able to bring them to follow along or something. So. Okay, so those are the questions. Moving on. Um, so moving on into truancy now. Um, attendance is out of the way. Uh, there are some changes uh, to truancy collection this year. Um, so the following fields have been removed from the truancy upload and data entry screens. Uh, the end date, the end status, end comment, pause date, code, notes, and resume dates and notes. Um, another change to truancy is some truancy incidents will auto-close and end date when enrollments are exited with certain exit reasons, and the exit reasons are as follows right here. Give you guys a couple seconds if you want to look through that. But moving on. Um, so notes are no longer required for the following action. Um, superintendent notification, parent notification, school board notification, or official parent meetings. Uh, we no longer require notes for those. Um, while there is no longer a dependency between the intervention plan and notification of superintendents, 
um, there is no longer a dependency, and there is no longer a dependency between parent notification and school board notification as there was in the past. Um, super in the intervention plan and notification of the superintendent, though, must be done before parent and school board notification. Those steps do need to follow before. As far as the truancy report goes, it's located in student reports just like attendance. Um, and you'll see a report like this labeled student truancy certification and truancy, uh, student truancy report. Certification is where you will handle reporting. So you'll go into there and uh, reporting is done quarterly. Um, it's important to note that information from Synergy uh, refreshes hourly to attendance and truancy. So if you make a change in Synergy, it can take up to an hour to potentially two hours um, for you to see your information reflect. But a lot of that's repeat. So we'll move on into the next report, which will be student behavior. Let me just make sure there's no questions. Okay, so um, student behavior data includes instances of violent and harmful behaviors. Um, this is reported in Synergy. Uh, statewide standards for behavior 2001, these uh, follow student code of conduct and the needs the school discipline policy. Uh, to include any positive or restorative interventions used. Bullying is reported in NEO. We have a full section for bullying. Um, just like student reports, instead of student reports, you'll find a section labeled bullying reporting. And then we can ignore the restraint seclusion on the slide. Um, purpose of reporting uh, is just to identify student behavior that is disruptive, harmful, violent, or unsafe in any way. Um, is to identify interventions and the best practices um, designed to improve relationships and repair harm caused through this, these misbehaviors. Um, they do need to comply with federal requirements. Uh, we need the offender's race, ethnicity, special education status, and disciplinary action taken. And the department will use this data and its efforts related to school improvement. Um, a useful breakdown of how to quantify some uh, behavior slash bullying incidents. And you can just either screenshot this or look at this real quick. I'll leave it up for a couple seconds for anyone that wants it. But it gives you a breakdown of how to or when to report an incident or to not report an incident. So, um, there are different types of uh, behavior incidents um, as defined here. Um, we have illicit drug-related incidents, uh, alcohol-related weapons possession, violent incidents with physical injury, violent incidents without physical injury, and other. So um, suspension and expulsion. Um, expulsions uh, include the expulsion consequence including the number of days the student was expelled, um, either at the conclusion of the school board's hearing or when the student returns to school. Uh, suspension needs to be entered when there is an expulsion uh, in school and out of school. And expulsion uh, equals, oh, so expulsion should not exceed the total number of instructional days. Obviously, a student can't be expelled for more days than they were supposed to be enrolled. And suspension, uh, there should be no services for at least half a day of school. And that second bullet should read suspension needs to be entered when there is a suspension opposed to expulsion. That is a mistype. Um, so moving on, definition of bullying. Um, uh, it's kind of qu hard to quantify what is considered an instance of bullying. So uh, here's a definition that we provide. Um, bullying includes, but is not limited to, a written, oral, or electronic expression, um, or a physical act or gesture of any combination there directed at a student or students. Um, it has a, has a reasonable person would expect it to have the effect of physically harming a student or damaging a student's property or placing a student in <coughs> of physical harm or damage. 
or it can also be uh, it interferes with the rights of a student by creating an intimidating or hostile educational environment for the student or interferes with the student's academic performance or ability to participate. And lastly, it could also be uh, based on a student's actual or perceived race, color, origin, ancestry, religion, um, gender, or any sort of thing in that regard. As far as reporting bullying, um, once you enter NEO, uh, as you can see on the screen right here, there will be a section at the top just like student data, bullying reporting system, that's where you'll go. And you'll come to the home screen where you'll see uh, this section right here, report and review slash certify of substantiated incidents of bullying. Once you click this little here link, it'll pull up a screen like this. Um, and then you just click this create new incidents uh, whenever you want to report an incident. And then it'll ask you which school was this at, click that, and then uh, it'll just ask you to fill out these fields here. Once that's done, uh, once you've completed uh, reporting all your incidents throughout the year, um, you can come back here and click the school details link to go certify your report and the certification button will be located in that school details link. And that's not correct either. The certification is under the school summary. Yeah, I was gonna say. Details. So, yeah, we'll, again, these slides are used from the summer, so some things have changed or some things weren't done up, uh, up to date from those slides, so. And we are working, we still have, when you go in there, we have 18, 19 quarterly dates we are working with our IT folks to try to get them to update that by the end of business today. So again, hopefully tomorrow morning, you'll be able to go in and uh, certify your Q1 bully. So um, with that, that goes through the quarterly reports. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was um, the instructions page for the help desk. Uh, this has this is really useful because not only will you find instructions for all of these reports, you will also find instructions for just about any report you'll be handling throughout this year. Um, so we will go here. Once I can connect to the internet. Uh, uh, real quick, though, we do have a question. We have a couple questions. Um, if you do not have a bullying incident, if you do not have a bullying incident, what steps do you take? Uh, you don't have to take any steps if you don't have a instance of bullying to report. It is it is a zero report, quote unquote, which means even if you've got nothing to report, you still have to certify that so that we know that you're cognizant that you're reporting zero reports. And the, did. You know that you're certifying that you don't have any rather than you just didn't do it. Correct. Yeah. So there's no additional steps you need to take if you don't have any uh, incidents. You just need to complete the report as normal. Uh, and we have another question in a second. Okay. Um, back to enrollments. Has there been a change in private school reporting for enrollments? A town in my district has a school choice, and I don't see any enrollments from the private schools in my out-of-district placement reports yet. Um, private schools don't put enrollments into synergies. They do, they do if they're public. Well, if they're publicly funded. So would that just be a case the private school hasn't enrolled a student yeah, yet? I need to reach out to that school and make sure they know that. Yeah. So if those students are publicly funded, uh, you'll need to reach out to the schools and figure out and to make sure those students are enrolled. So going back to the web page, uh, can you type up the answer to that? Um, this is the this is the DOE's website. Um, to find our section, you'll go over to this header for data and reporting. You go into there. and you'll find the help desk section. Inside here, you can see our splash page. Um, this is this is where you'll see uh, once attendance reporting becomes available. But if you scroll down here, data reporting instructions, um, 
This is where you'll find all of our instructions for just about any report. Uh, we, we try to keep these up to date as much as possible, but as you can see, attendance data reporting is right here, attendance certification, and as far as getting this information into Synergy, uh, those guides are also available right here under Synergy instruction. Um, for the person who was looking for where the, uh, some of the slideshows would be available, um, the webinars will be recorded as well as the questions and answers uh, spoken during this time. So it'll be all recorded down here in this webinars presentations file. Once you click that, uh, you'll see this page is pretty small right now, but that's we're getting more and more uploaded to this um, each week. We still have a bunch of more up, uh, webinars to upload to this, but all the webinars we'll be handling throughout the year um, will be available here as well as our summer slideshows. So that's where you can find a lot of the slides in this PowerPoint. Um, but with that, uh, that's quarterly reporting. So we are going to open it up for questions. If anyone has any questions, um, we will just be hanging out and fielding questions for the next 30 minutes. So we got um, a comment, uh, when I ran a student personal report, I received a lot of uh, home phone contains alpha characters. Um, is uh, this an issue? It is a known issue and it's with area codes that are not 207. So if you're a border town and you're close to New Hampshire and you have a lot of 603s or whatever, it will not take it. So we are waiting for a fix from Synergy. In the meantime, you can just extract those phone numbers from the records in the file prior to uploading. We don't need that phone number, even though we accept it. It is not a required state required field. So, so uh, in, unless they're an EUT student, we will need to know that. If, if you have a case of that, contact the help desk uh, and we will work through that with you. Okay. Um, got another question. Should quarter four be due in July? Um, quarter four is due June 15th. As, uh, right here on the screen, uh, it, quarter four will open in June and that is, that will go out to June 15th. Information in July is to be included in uh, quarter one of the next year. Um, going back to the quarter for being due in July, um, we are aware some schools probably won't be closed by that time, um, so we will go and review those dates, but uh, it was set up to just follow a lot of the other reports time frame, so we can look into that. But the other thing is that we realize that some schools may not be done, but the schools that are done, we would like to have that done as soon as possible. One of the problems with end-of-year reporting is that 
people wait until the end of the year to do it and then they're gone and we don't have anyone to follow up with if there are missing or issues found with the data. So it's very important to get that in as soon as possible so that we still have time to talk to people before they leave in July for the summer. Um, so that's why we're, we're trying to push those end of year dates to as close to the end of, of um, to middle to end of June as possible so that we can still have time to validate that data before people leave for the summer and before we have to roll the school year over for the next school year. The report will be open through the end of June and we will take a look at the due date for that and confirm when it definitely is. Um, another question, I actually got quite a few questions coming in. Is it possible to get a copy of these slides? I was not able to watch the whole presentation. Like, yep, so um, these slides will be available on the uh, webinars presentations page. I'll pull that back up. Um, one thing I will note, these slides, um, it is just pulled from the summer slideshows. However, we will post this slideshow with the webinar as well if you just want this specific slideshow. But if you come to the help desk page right here, uh, this resource tile for webinars presentations will have this recorded webinar as well as the slideshow. Okay. Uh, another question How are excused absences considered towards truancy? So, excused absences are only used for chronic absenteeism. Uh, truancy uh, doesn't, it only looks at unexcused absences. So, an excused absence does not count towards truancy. However, excused absences do count towards chronic absenteeism. Next question, uh, is there information somewhere about the new requirements for restraint and seclusion? Um, there are, uh, in the summer training uh, webinar slides right here on this page, if you go to the slideshow from the summer, there is a section on restraint and seclusion in there that you can review. Also, if you have questions about that, I would suggest that you call the school and student support team and ask for Gail Erdheim um, and, and talk with her about what your questions are. Uh, okay. Next question. Um, oh, just a thank you. You're very welcome. Um, we are in school until the 18th of June. Yep, we are not done school. Yep, so that goes back to the, we are where some schools won't be finished. Um, we do want to just get a hang of people before they uh, head out for the summer, but we will discuss that later. Off subject question, um, why does an enrollment type show on the enrollment tab in Synergy? Because the enrollment type is dictated by the school type. So if you're a public school, you can only have primary enrollments. If you're a special purpose private school, you can only have concurrent enrollments. So there's no instance I can think of where a school would have both primary and concurrent. So it's, it's dictated by the school type. Uh, just a clarification, superintendents cannot certify until October 16th. No, that's for uh, that's just for October EPS reporting. That's a separate report. Quarterly reports are open the first. You can certify them on the first. They're just due before the fifteenth. Uh, staff certification webinar is the day after the staff certification is due. Uh, could important issues be posted to the due, uh, prior to the due date? So that was a miscommunication that went out. There was a correction that went out, I believe, on Friday. Um, staff is not due, and staff is open now, and we we encourage people to get it done as soon as possible because if we there are issues, we need time to get back to you before we need to pull that data for EPS. 
However, the deadline for certification is October 31st, not October 15th. So also along with that, and they'll talk about this more in the webinar, is that that, that is a hard deadline. In the past, we've had people push that deadline and, and try to get stuff in later. We don't have time for that this year. Um, the, the school finance team has to get this done into the um, ed committee early this year. So there isn't time to keep going back and forth with data questions about staff or, or not certifying until later or coming up with corrections in November. We have to have this done this year on October 31st, which was the reason that the communication went out and was confusing. And we apologize for that, but we do want to let people know that this is a hard deadline and you do need to get it done by the 31st. Um, I am seeing a few people with hands raised um, and questions on the side. So um, just a reminder, if you guys have any questions, uh, your webinar application on the right side should have a little tab for questions. You'll just type your questions into that and send them over. Uh, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, if we have an EL student who have exited, how can we exit them out of Synergy? That field is locked. That has to be, you have to send a communication to April Perkins here at the state. Um, she will verify that the student has tested out, and uh, then she'll let us know at the help desk, and we can go in and enter in that EL exit date on your behalf. Uh, another question. Enrollment type may want to be thought about again. We are a public school that has students enrolled in charter schools and attend chorus band slash PE. Okay, that's something that you have to work out with that charter school because if they're at a charter school and you're offering them any sort of academic instruction, then you're doing that on your own dime. Um, you will not be subsidized for that. So that's something that you may want to enter into a cost sharing agreement with the charter school, um, but we're not going to, in no way are we going to have public schools be able to put partial enrollments in for charter school students. Uh, again, we're just going to hang out for a uh, few minutes and get any questions come through. Uh, feel free to ask because now we like to use these webinars to hear questions or specific questions you guys have to your problem. Uh, another question, if enrollment type is by school, why do we need to upload it? It's a good question. I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure why that would be a data element if you're restricted by the school type. So I will look into that um, and get back to you on that.
Okay, so it looks like the questions are starting to slow down, so we'll probably leave this open for a few couple more minutes. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So that could be a couple different reasons. We have a question saying, uh, when I click on Truancy Details Report, it brings me back into the log page or back to the login page. Um, one reason that might be is uh, you might have timed out. You might have been um, inactive on the page for too long, so it's going to just ask you to re-log in. You may actually have to close the browser and re-log in because sometimes it'll just put you in an infinite re-login loop. Um, or it might just be a issue if that if you try multiple times. Okay, so if you are logged in and it's not asking you to log back in, um, it may just actually be a bug we'll have to look into. But I would recommend uh, closing uh, the browser completely because there is an infinite login loop with it. Um, so, yeah, we'll look into that issue with the, the login page. Um, um, we would recommend you just call the help desk, though, and uh, maybe they can walk you through it, maybe find something we're missing. It's just kind of hard to answer, figure that out through uh, text. Uh, we'll just give it one more minute. Uh, it looks like the questions are starting to slow down.
So looks like we're getting no more questions. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, again, everything, uh, any instructions you guys may need uh, will be available on the data reporting page located right on the help desk tile, uh, right on the help desk page under this tile. But with that, thank you everyone who attended this webinar. Um, hopefully attendance will be in there tomorrow, but quarterly reporting opens today. So you guys should be all set to go and start doing that. Uh, Again, thank you and have a good day.